Before I start this video, I just like to say that this video is fair use, so all the media used in this video is used for criticism, review, or in a transformative way, and all the information I show and refer to is public information and everything else is my opinion or alleged. So the next thing I want to talk about is Leah Marie Johnson, and I haven't talked about her in a while because nobody else has been talking about her in a while. So I remembered that like I hadn't talked about Leah Marie Johnson in a while, so I searched her name up and I found some shit. So basically her and her boyfriend Ryan Bowers, they released this music video for the song called Long Road, which apparently was deleted, but then I found it and it's still like on his channel, so I guess it's like not deleted, I don't really know. Basically in that music video it was just I guess them hanging out but a lot of drugs and guns were involved from what you can see like you can't really explicitly see because it's not like they're showing you and it is from like a dark room and stuff like that it did look like just weed but like saying just weed is a pretty bad way to put it because it's Leah Marie Johnson and from her live streams we know that she has had a relationship with more serious drugs and and people still think that she seems drugged and again paired with the guns and just like the whole vibe of the video it's not the best especially just because of things that we know her to be involved in in the past so ryan deleted the instagram post about the video and leah deleted the her entire new instagram account apparently she had like her original instagram account which she couldn't log into and then she made a new instagram account but apparently that one's been deleted i went on her original instagram account on her latest post which is quite a while ago and some people say say that she's in rehab so i don't actually know if the new account is real So the next thing I want to talk about is Petty Page, who was the person that Jeffree Star DM'd about the whole Davy Vanity situation because obviously he wanted to make himself seem good. He basically sent her a DM on Twitter being like, oh, I know you'll get the real story out because you know me and stuff like that in order to try and get her to make Jeffree look good in her video about it, I guess. Which, no, she doesn't know you and no, she doesn't know the situation, so don't know what the fuck that was about. But basically she uploaded a video about Jeffree Star and that situation obviously not to cater towards him because she realized that his DM was just manipulative bullshit and that video got taken down because of a privacy complaint and usually when a video on YouTube gets taken down because of privacy issues the person that filed the complaint will email you from their email address so that you could discuss the privacy issue and that could all be sorted out but that didn't happen what happened with Petty Page is YouTube's no respond, like no reply email, emailed her about the privacy issue. Which is really, really strange because how is she supposed to sort out the issue if she doesn't know who it's from? And she can't respond to the email. And people obviously think it's Jeffree Star because the video was about Jeffree Star. I mean, Davy Vanity as well, but Jeffree Star. And I believe there were screenshots from conversations with Jeffree Star. So that would be the only thing that really breached privacy issues. There was nothing really in that video that really called for a privacy issue in order to take the video down. So yeah, that's kind of sketchy and people think Jeffree Star's behind it. Jeffree Star tweeted about the situation saying, I would never take down somebody else's video. You guys are being silly at this point. Paige still follows me and could have asked me herself, but I guess this creates more views if you insinuate I did something I didn't. I'm bored. Rizzola responded saying, I'm honestly not surprised that you're here right now. There's no evidence that you did it as well as none to prove that you didn't. Just though the video did pertain to you, very well could have been Darby, but it still is shady that YouTube has no explanation as of yet. When Paige contacted YouTube, they basically said that they couldn't see it in their system. Like in their system, there was no privacy complaint or anything like that and her friends uploaded a copy of the video with literally nothing else just like an exact copy of that video and they ended up getting legal complaints so that the video couldn't actually upload so the next thing i want to talk about is pokimane who's had like a history of copyright claiming or striking people's videos down and they don't really deserve it if y'all don't remember she did that to pewdiepie after he said twitch thoughts in a video so she's obviously not the best person in regards to like following rules and she will do something about your video if she doesn't like it this YouTuber by the name of It's a Gundam uploaded a video where they basically criticized Pokimane simps because they were paying Pokimane so much money that they couldn't pay their rent, that they were like genuinely doing things that they couldn't actually do in real life in order to give Pokimane money, despite the fact that she's a multi-millionaire. Like there were trips that they were supposed to go on with like their actual girlfriends and stuff in their actual lives and they just couldn't do that because they couldn't afford it because some of them were spending over a thousand dollars on just donating to Pokimane and a lot of them would like make fun of other simps of Pokimane for not donating enough 
Like somebody on Twitter tweeted about how they were a little low on their rent, but he's still gonna donate $500 to her next stream. And then people were like, huh, only $500? What a broke ass bitch. Like, since when was... I'm just a little bit confused. And so this person made the video where they basically called out her sims for being really irresponsible with their money and basically screwing over their own lives just to give extra money to this person who doesn't even care. $500 is basically nothing to her. So she made the mistake of reacting to this video live on her Twitch and obviously she couldn't respond rationally because those simps that Gundam was making fun of were watching her live stream. So instead of doing literally anything else, she decided to copyright claim the video, I believe, and then she proceeded to contact the sponsor that this person had in their video and email them saying that they should be ashamed to sponsor this channel. I'm just confused as to why people kind of- I mean, her fans are obviously not going to give a fuck because her being successful has mostly got to do with her looks. Like, she is attractive, she is pretty, and that's where her audience comes from, as you can tell by the massive amounts of simps that she gets. So her being, like, a bad person to a certain extent isn't really going to affect the amount of fans that she has. I'm just a bit confused as to why. Obviously, I don't know the behind the scenes. I'm assuming that PewDiePie was like fine with it. I'm just confused as to why after she screwed over one of his videos, Markiplier and I believe Jacksepticeye proceeded to collab with her a lot. Like I know they're not close as friends as the internet would want to believe, but I'm just confused like if somebody copyright striked my video and then my kind of friends, like internet friends, proceeded to collab with them and promote her, I would be a little bit just, I don't know, I would, I'd feel some kind of way. Obviously the issue is that when she does stuff like this to smaller channels, they're so heavily affected this person is now going to struggle with sponsorships and this person is now not going to get money from that one video Which wouldn't be a big thing if they were a big channel like when it happened to PewDiePie Yes, it was frustrating, but he could just make that money again because he's rich and to Pokemon It might not seem like a big deal because she's also rich But not everyone can just give away money that they made on one entire video that they spent a lot of hard work on So the last kind of last thing there's like two categories to this is the whole Lana Del Rey situation Where she posted on her Instagram. Let me pull it up. Why am I? not prepared. So this post kind of blew up. It has almost 2 million likes. So she says, question for the culture. Now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kalani, and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce have had number ones with songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking, cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect or dancing for money or whatever I want without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse? I'm fed up with female writers and old singers saying that I glamorize abuse but in reality I'm just a glamorous person singing about the realities of what we are all now seeing our very prevalent emotionally abusive relationships all over the world. With all the topics that women are finally allowed to explore, I just want to say that over the last 10 years, I think it's pathetic that my minor lyrical exploration detailing me sometimes submissive or passive roles in my relationships has often made people say I've set women back hundreds of years. Let this be clear. I am not a feminist, but there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me. The kind of woman who says no, but men hear yes. The kind of woman who are slated mercilessly for being their authentic, delicate selves. The kind of women that get their own stories and voices taken away from them by stronger women or by men who hate women. I've been honest and optimistic about the challenging relationships I've had. News flash is just how it is for many women. And that was sadly my experience until the point that those records were made. So I just want to say that it's been a long 10 years of bullshit reviews up until recently and I've learned a lot from them. But I also feel it really paved the way for other women to start, quote, putting on a happy face and just to be able to say whatever the hell they want in their music. I like my experience where if I expressed a note of sadness in my first two records, I was deemed literally hysteric but as though it was literally the 1920s. I don't want to be too opinionated on this because I don't want to get attacked. But my overall sense is this post was very tone deaf um, in a certain way. A lot of people have been giving her shit for being racist. I definitely don't think that she's being racist. I just think that she phrases this in a really bad way. And she just so happened to name women of color in the industry. But I don't think she's racist. I don't think she actually meant it that way. And I think that people who are trying to paint her as racist are just a bit mad and don't really know how to express that anger and just try to throw it anywhere and try to cancel her by saying that she's racist. I personally don't think that she's racist at all. At least not from this post. I don't know about her. I just want to say that hate in the industry and stuff like that, it's just, it's not all about her. Like, sexual artists like Beyonce, why would you call out Beyonce? Oh my god. But sexual artists like Beyonce do get a lot of hate and it shouldn't be a matter of hypersexual women against fragile women. It should be a matter of women trying to express their voices and their feelings without being ridiculed and she's more focusing on wow sexual women are kind of fucking me over because I'm fragile and I'm submissive like no they're really not. I'd just like to say that 
a lot of the women that she has named have gotten a lot worse hate and have been treated a lot worse for being overly sexual. Not that it should be a competition about who has faced the most hate or who, is, who has been getting the most shit. It's not about that but she kind of that's the way that she made her post like she made a competition between women who are comfortable with their sexuality and women who are comfortable with being submissive she really didn't have to belittle other artists in order to build herself up she could build herself up in any way that she wants she's lana del rey she's beautiful and her songs are gorgeous and glamorous and she does have a lot of talent i'm just so confused as to why she had to do it like this why she had to put down other women and that just gives me such pick-me-girl from this vibe. Like, oh, I'm submissive, I'm fragile, I'm not a feminist, but there has to be a place for feminists for women like me, who aren't sexual and gross, but who are like me. Like, I'm not writing songs about being fucked or cheating or not wearing clothes. I'm writing beautiful songs. Like, I know she probably didn't mean it that way. I know that, but she, the way that she wanted it is so, so ignorant. And just because totally different artists who have nothing to do with her are making different music about different things and are liked in pop and hip-hop culture doesn't mean that you have to be. People like different things. People can like songs about sex and stuff like that and they don't have to like your songs because some people just don't like your songs. I know this is a really shitty excuse and I hate it when people say this but you're always gonna get hate if you're popular or famous like this. I just think that it comes with the job to be able to handle it at least somewhat well or at least handle it in a way where you don't have to put other women down to build yourself up and make yourself look like some sort of hero when you're not. And then we get to I'm not a feminist, but. So I'm just gonna refer to some comments right now. Somebody said, why are you deleting comments even from those who are your fans and just want to see you do better? It's absolutely out of touch to compare your struggles to those of women of color and describe their songs as being fucking slash cheating while yours are about being embodied and in love. Even if you didn't intend it to be that way, it is how it is. Apologize and do better. Listen to the criticism coming from us girls in the comments, especially black and brown girls. Why dance around feminism? It's not a dirty word. As a longtime fan, I'm disappointed. I see there's a lot of hate in the comments and I do hope you're doing well, but you need to take responsibility for your words. As white women, we should never ever play into any kind of of stereotype or forget that we don't face the same issues that women of color face. We have to do better and make sure there's a place in feminism for them because there's always been one for us. And that is so true. I hate how she said, I'm not feminist, but there has to be a place. Like she's dancing around feminism as if it's a bad thing. Like I get it with the whole, she mentions this in her next post that I'm going to bring up, but she mentions like the whole third wave feminism and like the new wave of it. And it's kind of gotten to the point where the line between feminism and feminazi are kind of blurred. But that's why we need to stop dancing around that word. Because when we dance around the word feminism we make feminists and feminazi the same thing but that's a different issue the issue is her acting as if her struggles are so significant and highlighted when in reality they're not again it's not a competition but the way that she made this post it kind of has turned into one if it was just me who interpreted the bullshit she wrote wrong i'm pretty sure it wouldn't have blown up like it did if you read between the lines you will clearly see her mindset we need more women like me delicate women like me or even feminism for me maybe if you read between the lines you would obviously see that she's trying to say if it was just third paragraph that she put out no one would give a fuck but it wasn't her favorite rappers that she decided to call out have gone through much more shit she will never go through in her life Sorry, you can't interpret the four other lines of bullshit, but that's whatever, girly. And the person responded saying, see, that's your problem. You read between the lines and not what's right there. Like, the thing is, we are reading what's right there. And the thing is, it's really condescending. And while we women have fought to be able to be sexual and not deemed as disgusting sluts, it's a horrible... I, I don't want to say this, but she has set them even back, like, a tiny bit. Like, yes, those things, I don't know if she meant to put those things in and meant for it to sound the way that she did, but it's such pick-me-girl vibes, it's such, I'm delicate and there has to be a place for women like me. There's always been a place in feminism for women like you, for delicate white women like you. It is the sexual women of colour who have had to fought their way into feminism and have fought their way into being respected. Like, reading in between the lines isn't a bad thing, that's what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to analyse the language. Like, is, are we wrong for noticing things like this? Like, yes, I did think it was a bit over the line and a bit cherry-picking when people said that she was racist because she was mentioning women of colour. I don't think that. And that's when I think people should have drawn the line. Like, that's when you should stop reading in between the lines. That's when you should stop over-analyzing and stuff like that. But that's... We aren't over-analyzing when we say that she wrote this in a terrible, terrible way. 
So a new post says, a couple of final notes on my controversial post that's not controversial at all. Despite the feedback I've heard from several people that I mentioned in a complimentary way, you didn't. Whether it be Ariana or Doja Cat, I just want to say that I remain firm in my clarity and stance in that what I was writing about was the importance of self-advocacy for the more delicate and often dismissed softer female personality and that there does have to be room for us in what will inevitably become a new wave slash third wave of feminism that is rapidly approaching. Perhaps I should have given more context to my post by mentioning the title of the second book. I don't know why she's making it about her books. It's literally not. I'm sorry to the folks who I can only assume are super Trump or Pence supporters or hyper liberals or flip flopping headline grabbing critics who can't read and want to make it a race war when in fact the issue is with female critics and female alternative artists who are dissociated from their own fragility and sexuality and berate more sexually liberated artists like myself and the woman I mentioned. The issue that I have with this specific paragraph is that she's only mentioned, like it's the thing that Lily Singh does and it's the thing that li like people have a problem with Lily Singh, like she only mentions like the racist, sexist comments and then she mixes it in with the criticism. So when Lily Singh is like, oh these are the criticisms that I get but you guys are actually being racist and sexist and just straight up rude and hating on me. When she's just fully ignoring the perfectly fine criticism and valid criticisms that people are trying to give her to try and help her. I feel like that's what Alana is doing. Like we are trying to help her. We are trying to give her valid criticism like you worded this in a terrible way. You worded this in a way that made you seem like a superior version of woman. Like obviously there were people like oh you're racist. This is so racist of you. Like wh why are you focusing on that? Why? And then she says that making about race says way more about you than it does about me. You want the drama. You don't want to believe that a woman can be beautiful, strong, and fragile at the same time. Loving and all-inclusive by making personal reparations simply for the joy of doing it. Nothing new here in your reaction. Same as 10 years ago when a million thing pieces came out about me feigning emotional fragility or lying about coming from no money when that was the truth. Her not being able to see how tone deaf and poorly written her original post is just speaks to me that she is so ignorant and she is unwilling to educate herself. And if you're ignorant and unwilling to educate yourself, that is when you move into the discriminatory areas. There has to be a place for delicate, softer females. They need to be represented in third wave females. Like, okay, if you want to write about that, write about that. Not everyone wants to write about that or listen to it, but people are listening to you. You are such a big artist. What do you mean that... Uh, this was such an unnecessary post. I don't know why she posted it. I mean, I understand why she posted it. I just don't know why she did it in the way that she did. I'm confused as to why she doesn't apologize. Like, even if she still remains ignorant, just apologize. Chances are people will forgive you even if it's not too sincere because we, at this point, just want an apology. We're just hurt that you use third ways feminism as a way to belittle other women who have fought for so long to get to the place that they have. She's not racist. She used the artists as examples and she didn't say that women of color don't struggle and she just said that she struggles for different reasons. Both lyrics are fine, she's just trying to normalize that and not be accused of promoting violence just because the song lyrics are different. Why is it so hard to understand? Why do people always play the victim card? I feel like this is the message that she was supposed to promote and it would be so good if this person kind of like wrote her post for her because they clearly know what should be written and how things should be worded. The way that she worded it and then proceeding to not want to apologize and only mention the hate from people who are calling her racist and meshing that in with people who are genuinely trying to criticize her for not being the most supportive of other women. Like this is a good comment, I just disagree in the fact that she should apologize. That's the only thing I really disagree on. Okay, and this is like the last category of it, Doja Cat. I'm assuming that she responded in some sort of way. I checked her Instagram and I couldn't find anything, but I'm assuming she responded negatively to this kind of thing in some sort of way because then people started targeting her and tried to dig into her past and find some dirt on her, which they did. I didn't write this down. I did hear about how she apparently had this live stream where she was talking about how she like hated her natural hair and then her boyfriend came on and was like, oh no, I love your natural hair. Your natural hair is fine. And then everyone was like, okay, that's all we really needed to know about her. She has been involved with racist group chats. She's been in a lot of group chats with incels, really. Men who are racist. That's all I can really say about it. Like, you can say they're jokes. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole other conversation. They're jokes and they're racist. And But somebody said that they're not going to hate on Lana for being in these group chats. If she finds these people funny, then that clearly says something about her, but that's not none of their business and they're not really going to say anything about that. For the record, I think most of us are not surprised about Doja, but we didn't know she was that deep in it. I had suspicions that she was a weirdo, but making a song making fun of Sandra Bland's death, being friends with incels, asking white people to call her the N-word during sex, Dating predators, this is way too much. Apparently she likes being called the N-word during sex. I don't know where that came from. And she's also have a couple problematic song titles. I literally thought it was like a different fucking language. So didn't do nothing is like didn't do nothing. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Essentially it was like a phrase that white people would use to make fun of 
black women after black women some black people after they got killed for cops for literally no reason I, I feel like everyone already kind of knew that she didn't really associate herself with like african culture and just like the black community and stuff like that when people called her out on her homophobia i don't know how they found out or whatever the fuck she then tweeted i called a couple people faggots when i was in high school in 2015 does this mean i don't deserve support i've said faggot roughly like 15,000 times in my life does saying faggot mean you hate gay people do i hate gay people i don't think i hate gay people gay is okay um i feel like this tweet was a bit again badly worded i don't know if she's homophobic i don't know her i don't know her intentions i'm just saying this was a bad tweet that she could have just apologized i'm confused as to why she didn't do that if you're not homophobic and you think gay is okay then why didn't you just apologize I don't want to hate on her too much because it clearly comes from a place of self-hatred and stuff that's been kind of fed to her from a young age. There's a lot of personal issues that she has to deal with. So yeah, that is all for today. If you like this video or if you like me, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like me, get in contact with my teachers because I bet you'll have a lot in common. And stay safe and stay hydrated.